Hello, welcome to Petro Media Inc. I'm Terrence Anderson, and today I decided one of the things we could do that I thought would be fun would be to go back through my history of music production and make fun of the beginning of my path. Now, I began producing music uh, back in, I want to say, 2000, 2001, like professionally doing it. Before that, I was playing around. I had a, I think it was a Boss uh, SB202 or something like that. I was just playing around with it and having some fun with it. But um, my journey really, truly didn't start till after the DJX uh, keyboard and the uh, EMU Carnival. It started when I had the 2000 XL. Now, today I don't have a 2000 XL. Um, I do have the MPC 1000, and the 1000 has the ability to actually play the 2000 files. Now, my 1000 is, because before, any, before anybody says anything, they're like, oh, it's not plugged in. It's actually powered on. Mine has the battery mod from soundmod.io. It actually uh, has been very beneficial. This is the one that I take with me on the road. It's compatible with the 5000, but uh, the 2000 Excel files are not compatible with the 5000. And because I don't have another stand for it, because normally the, the 1000 lives right here next to the 5000, I decided I'm just going to, you know, work on things on the 1000 from the 2000. That way we can hear the tracks and, you know, see what 2001 Terrence Anderson production sounded like out of the college dorm at Howard University uh, where uh, I met my partner, Darren Joseph, and we worked on the whistle track for Joel Santana. But that wasn't an MPC track. That, that's a story for another day. But yeah, he was working in FL Studio back then. It was called Fruity Loops and a few other different things. Reason, I think, was one of them. And I was working on the MPC. Let's kick it off by going through some tracks and just checking some things out. Seeing what we like, what we don't like, and asking a lot of whys. <laughs> I think, I think that'd be a lot of fun. I need to use that. Oh yeah, this is this is the beginning. <laughs> So a, a thing I used to do, um, because with the 2000, you have multiple sequences, just like the 1000, the 5000, pretty much every MPC works this way. For those who don't own an MPC, uh, you usually get somewhere in the neighborhood of like 99 sequences. So what we used to do back in the day, and it's kind of a thing that a lot of producers would do with uh, older technology, you couldn't have multiple uh, you would have enough storage to do like multiple of anything <laughs> at any given time. Back then storage was really, really expensive. So the easier thing to do would be to load up all of the sounds you wanted to use, especially your drum sounds, and then just make multiple sequences. So I'd have like for any one session, there could be like three to five beats in that one sitting because the, the, the great thing, the great thing about using um, an MPC or any device that's a hardware sequencer and being off the computer is that you could just be more fluid with, with, with your workflow. Um, that's what makes the new MPCs really, really powerful. Like I'm not doubting putting them down at all. They're amazing devices. They're just not my cup of tea. Um, but they are all great at this, where you can work on one sequence. You have, right there, I had three drum sequences with some a little bit of melody noises or whatever, whatever I could sample and, and grab at the time. Um, and ironically, those were not, actually not that bad. Um, I was really expecting stuff to be really bad. <laughs> and the 1000 actually loads really, really, really fast. Um, back then, the 2000XL used floppy disks and zip drives. Compact Flash was not really a thing. 
um, for those devices. So when the 1000 came around and it was comp, it was compact flash, which is solid state memory, essentially. Um, it just was a game changer. Okay, hold on, let's start this over. Let's try to figure this out. I did that all sorts of wrong. So let's try, uh, let's try this. That sounds more confusing than you think, <laughs> but the, the the trick I think is figuring out. I'm going through these sessions and it's like the memories are starting to come back, and I'm remembering that like with that one for example as an Al Green sample. I actually recorded all of the parts on different tracks in one sequence. So some things are overlapping, but <laughs> it made sense when I dragged it into Pro Tools back then, because then I could just part it out and move it around. Okay, okay. there's some gems in here. I didn't realize that uh, I had, some gems laying around. This is what happens when you just pack stuff up, you know, after you're done with something and you say, you know, I'm going to save it for later. You move on. Because by the time I got the, by the time I sold my 2000 XL, um, I had bought the Phantom, my first Phantom. This is my second Phantom. And at that time, going into the Phantom, because this thing is super, super powerful and we'll, we'll explore this more in another video. Um, I didn't need an MPC because of this keyboard. For about five or six years, I just didn't need one. So the uh, one, the 2000 Excel files went away. The first 1000 I had was blue, and I hated it. <laughs> I hated it because of the pads. The pads were individually triggered. I didn't know that when I bought it. Um, I didn't know that they went to this technology where each pad was separate, and it was just a it was a nightmare. If you know anybody who owns a blue MPC, the first gen MPC and they haven't changed the pads to the, the standard uh, pad strip, uh, you'll understand that they were all frustrated with it. Uh, but when they switched over to the, the, the plain, you know, regular strip scenario was just one pad sheet and all the pads are all together on one unit, um, it got better. So they made it a, a black case one and all the black case ones are guaranteed to be the gen two version of the 1000. Um, so, just a little fun fact, a little history about these uh, devices and whatever. But let's get back to these tracks. Man, that thing hits hard. And I labeled it bang this. So yeah, the, the other thing like I like about the older NPCs, um, the new ones can do it as well. But again, it's all about the way you use it. If you sit, I feel like with the NPC technology, whether it's old or new, the best way to use it is to sample the sounds into it. You can make the drums bang in the new NPC. The way people make big drums just doesn't seem to be the same as how we used to do it. Like I have on my website, I'm, I sell a lot of drum kits and whatever. And on my website, I have an old kit called the Tape Kit, I believe. It's all these 808s that we sampled through the, uh, the Neve console and through the tape 
onto 24 uh, to, onto two inch tape 24 tracks and then we sample that back out into pro tools and i made the kit for the npc those drums are ridiculous and um i don't use them as often as i should i probably should use them more but suffice to say back then the only way to get music into an npc was to sample it in that's why everybody also always talks about what's why the old ones are better than the new ones it's not that the old ones are better it's the way you use it if you use the the new ones the way the old ones work where you sample the audio in you use the converters the the drums just punch you in the face it doesn't even matter if it's a bad beat it just punches you in the face um and then after you get it in here even with the new ones then you can manipulate it however you want to manipulate it and then you know you're golden This was my first college band record. I sampled uh, Howard Marching Band. Um, it came out good. I actually had three rappers use it at, in, in college um, to just do some stuff with. Oh, yeah. This was, I got to figure this out. Stand by. Okay, let's start this over. I just made really loud, aggressive music. <laughs> and you know what? I love it. I feel like we're going to have to do like a two-parter or a three-parter because uh, this is just, it's a lot. Also, having the ability to know when something is complete garbage, although that first sequence was actually not that bad. Second and third was not that bad. Not that good. That's my wife. <laughs> this, <laughs> I actually uh, convinced her to record that, and then I just add, I added some effects to it. Uh, yeah, in the door. It is what it is. I need to finish some of these. 
You guys tell me what you think in the comments. Which one of these you think uh, you think I should actually go back and finish? Feel free to mark it by the timestamp. I don't mind that. I mean, that way it's a lot easier because just so you know, we are we are at I and we have a ways to go. And I don't think I'm going to do all of these today. <laughs> so I'm not going to find them, them all. Um, yeah, I'm not going to find them all. Not today. right that's how that go right so I, do i have this in song why don't i have this in song mode <laughs> oh my god i think i literally just tracked it all directly into pro tools and then just mixed it up so this was the intro and then there was a, a drop in for two bars And then just bang out on. So you got to remember, I came up in the, uh, the Just Blaze era of production. Uh, you know, the, those club banger records. I was a DJ that consistently played club bangers back then. So like my thing was to make you shake, make you dance like the rhythm of the beat was more important than anything else in the track to me. Um, the melody carried it, but the drums got you up out your, your seat and towards a woman or man <laughs> to go dance. And like, that was my mission when I uh, made beats. That was my mission when I DJ, so I made that my mission when I made beats. That's, like, that's not even done at all. Wow. A lot of people use these devices to make nothing but boom bap beats. They're totally capable of doing more than that. And I'm not hating on boom bap. I love boom bap. But my thing was at the time that I felt that everybody was doing boom bap. Like today, that's how it is also. Everybody's doing boom bap with an MPC. Um, so I think the rule of, of thumb is if you want to be um, amazing, either be really good at that boom bap because there's like 4 million people doing boom bap or be different. And I chose to be different. Oh, 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 oh. Now that we've made sense of this. We're in the J's now, by the way. Hi, this is me from the future. Uh, I decided to make it a two-part video, like I was saying. I think it's a smart move. It's pretty long. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to post half this week, and I'll post part two next week. 
and we'll get through it. I'm going to try to keep it all under like 25 minutes each. Like, share, and subscribe, and see me for part two.